Hey everyone, it's me, Lauren, your creative mentor. Welcome to like our bonus Monday. It's the fifth one of the month. So uh, what are we going to talk about, huh? Well, I'll tell you after my spiel, the one I try to remember to do every episode. So if you're new here, um, this is a podcast that was born out of the frustration of college not teaching any of us what we needed to know out of school. I went to art school. I asked my professors all the time, hey, how do I apply this to real life? What do I do? How do I get a job doing this? What's going on? And no one had an answer that was good enough for me. And then I got out of my fine art sculpture degree, put on the street, and didn't know the first thing about getting a creative job. And it took me seven years to find the one that I love. So I don't want that for you at all. And so I'm here to tell you literally everything that I know that I've learned. I'm almost 30. I'm what you call an elder millennial. And if you're watching me on YouTube, that background is real. That is my actual view outside of my bedroom. It is the city of Chicago. And um, I am old and have a mortgage and I own where I live. And it's pretty cool. I'm really proud of it. It's a new development for me. And um, I thought uh, again this week, second week in a row, I would share that with you. I do this podcast in my bedroom because we were also in the pandemic. So hi, welcome to my room. I made it myself. And you can watch me on YouTube. You can listen to me wherever you get podcasts. And if you're not following my TikTok, you're not trendy. So, <laughs> And I have a Patreon page. So everything I mentioned in this podcast as a reference it will be there for free. I have some premium content. I make workbooks that are also references for the material we talk about for the month. So this is the last week you can sign up to get this month, the month of March, the money month, to get the salary guide, to get negotiation points, all of it. Um, it'll be in the workbook for you. Seven bucks. Come on. It, it's money. It's the, it's the most value you can get. So um, what are we talking about today, Lauren, now that you've told us everything you always say? That's not true. I didn't say everything I said. Whenever anyone is giving you advice, you should be vetting the shit out of them. That includes me. And if you look at my past track record, you go on my LinkedIn, you'll see I do know what I'm talking about. And this podcast is rooted out of a mentorship class that I did with the AIGA. Not that I'm affiliated with them. So this is built off of something I started at like a weird academic level that I'm now just turning into this podcast. And also some of you are getting smart. You're finding me on LinkedIn and you're giving me messages before we connect. 100% A plus gold star. I love that. Please keep doing it. You're learning and I'm excited. So, all right, we're three minutes in. What are we talking about? We're talking about selling out. And I think it's a very on topic topic for this month and to end the month so selling out it's a conversation I see everybody having on TikTok in particular and um, it's something I think a lot of creatives have guilt for because essentially what we do our whole life is we create 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 on our own terms we're in high school we have all this time we're in school we have all this time we're in art school it's the only thing that we're doing we have all this time then you get out into the real world and like, what the hell do you even do? How do you become a successful creative, a successful maker, whatever you are, writer, whatever you are. And now you're using it to work for someone probably in a corporate way in some at some point or you're struggling and, and working for yourself. There's a million ways this cake can be cut. And how do you reconcile all of that stuff? I've said it a hundred times. We're going to talk about the capitalism thing next month, our emotional support month. And, um, you know, selling out is, I think, something that falls within ourselves as a group of creatives in a community and us as individuals, because there's a lot of elitism and there's a lot of ego in being a creative. And <laughs> that comes that comes with the territory. You know, I'm not going to say it doesn't or that we should be above that. It totally happens. You're going to have creative director bosses that have such an ego about things that they think they're the teacher and they can no longer learn. My personal opinion is that a creative is always learning because trends are always changing. Pop, What's popular in pop culture is always changing and that's relevant to our practice, whatever it is. Whether we're writing, drawing, doing ads, doing email design, 
doing digital stuff. It is all 100% relevant because we are humans participating in a society. And unless you're going to go live off the grid, which I learned is illegal to do, which is weird, um, you participate. Whether you like it or not. Whether you're almost a 30-year-old punk on the inside or a goth person, that's me. I'm pointing at me. You can't see. Um, <laughs> if you're one of them, you're an other to society and a lot of creatives consider themselves others to society and to an extent sometimes when you're at work you're treated like another for being a creative and you know what that's just the nature of things and things are the way that they are but something we can help and we can change is the attitude that we have in this everyday life and so I just kind of want to talk through some I got old and here's what I think thoughts about that so, I feel like the term sellout, you see it a lot in music, and it, it becomes ironic really fucking fast, because um, selling out means essentially guilt associated with making money. And, you know, you can look at bands like, you know, Pink Floyd and Metallica and Blink-182, whatever is classic rock to you these days. Uh <laughs> And see their music fucking everywhere. Commercials. Car commercials. Uh, on the radio 50 billion times a day. While your dad's mowing the lawn. All of that stuff. And when you really listen to the music, it's, it's anti-establishment sometimes. Or anti-society sometimes. Because it points out the flaws in like the world at the time that it's made. That's literally what being a creative is. We reflect, observe, and pushed back that observation in our various mediums of talent. Writing poetry, drawing things, doing graffiti, anything. All of that. Making music, doing videos. All of that is creativity and practice, which is essentially a commentary on your experience as a human being in a world or your experience on what you are observing in your society back to other members of your society. At its core, that's what being a creative is. And when you go to school, you get all these ideas of like what you think is relevant, what you think is authentic. And we go through that awful critique process, which I will give art school this if I give it anything else. Those critiques we had to deal with three hours at a time, sometimes at eight in the morning. They give you so much thick skin. You have such an ego death in art school that it really, really helps you in the real world. Like, if anything, someone could tell me the most garbage bullshit to my face and I would sit there and go like, well, I guess that's what you think because I'm not going to fight you over that because of art school. If, you've, if you know, you know. Um, <laughs> and so I've been seeing on TikTok a lot of people talking about what is authentic art and what is selling out and what is not. And I don't want to be... <sighs> okay boomer about it but y'all are young and you haven't experienced any life quite yet and what I mean by that is you haven't had to make your creativity pay for your food and your lights and your house and all of that and I feel like you change your tune real quick when you see all the different ways you can pay your bills because no matter what you have to you have to pay your bills I don't like it, but I have to. And so you work your little thought process around what you need. What are your necessities? What are your wants? Those are different things, needs and wants. How much money do you need? How much money do you want? How do you want to make that money? All of that is a relevant question. And I feel like there's a lot of looking down on people in the creative industry as through us as creatives and through other people we work with because they just don't have the context for what we do. And context is key. If you don't have context for what you're looking at, you're probably going to get frustrated about it. So if you ever find that you're angry or frustrated, you should take a pause and ask if you have all of the information. And if you don't have all of the information, you should be asking where you can find it. Because you're going to be a lot less angry that way. I'm just going to tell you right off the bat. And I used to be a pretty angry creative. And also, you might just not enjoy... I hate drawing for people. I love drawing. I draw all the time. But if someone asks me to draw something, I've decided it almost it took me to be 28 years old to decide this. I decided I don't like this. 
unless a band is going to ask me to draw like sexy pinup ladies and alligators for their shirts, I'm not going to take the job. I just don't enjoy it. I'd rather just be drawing for me. And sure, those drawings go nowhere. And that kind of feels weird in our social media society. But like, I just like to do that. And I and I'm not going to do it for other people unless I enjoy doing it. Whereas my graphic design job, it's like, I, I like doing graphic design. I might even branch out and do it a little more personally than I have been lately because I'm a lot more inspired because I have a lot more context for work I could be doing. But that point being is the sellout. And what a sellout is, is someone who's selling their work for to the man in a way. And, and it's very... It's a very weird term to think about, to be quite honest, because I just go to Andy Warhol's um, Campbell soup can painting. We all know it. Who couldn't? Um, But I feel like people could describe Andy Warhol as a sellout because of the pop art movement and all of the celebrity and all of that, which I think people equate to selling out in a way. And Campbell's soup bought his Campbell soup painting and hung it in their lobby. And that is such an oxymoron because the purpose of it was like the repetition of factory work and blah, 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 which actually is like a huge reason that sustainability is a hot topic these days because of manufacturing in the sixties to today, but whatever. Um, Point being is like, to me, when people say that was a sellout, it's kind of like a perfect art piece in a way. And what I mean by that is Andy Warhol sold that sold that painting for a bajillion dollars to the exact company he was reflecting on and having a commentary on. And the company missed the point and he still sold them the painting. So was he really a sellout or was that company dumb? Which is it? It could be either depending on your perspective. Both both statements can be right. And that's kind of the beauty of art, right? That's kind of the beauty of creativity. And that's why my perspective is some food for thought. If you can make money being creative, if you can make money standing in a set all day, if you can make money writing words that you've carefully chosen to communicate an emotion, if you can make money pointing and shooting a camera, whether it's taking video product photography if you can make money drawing if you can make money sitting in front of a computer just like making compositions all day you win man like I don't really understand why people get so bent out of shape about what they think selling out means because if I can make three thousand dollars a month or something like that by just sitting in photoshop all day watching tutorials, listening to podcasts, and talking to my friends, which is what my day-to-day work from home is, what am I complaining about? What am I so upset with? It's not like I have to go answer to the numbers and be all stressed out about margin and EBIT, whatever the hell that means. I hear that word every day at work, and I don't have to worry about analytics and stats and presenting to presidents of companies and stock and cryptocurrency. I don't have to worry about any of that. I get to sit where I belong on digital software thinking about how a person like me is going to interact with something and how it's going to make them feel and how they're going to view the object of desire I'm creating for them. And all of this stuff, I get to spend eight hours a day thinking about that stuff, which quite honestly, I was going to be thinking about anyway, because if I wasn't working for someone else, I probably would have made my own sort of business to sell art prints or something where I would have to be thinking about the same thing. How do I get someone to notice me on social media? How do I get people to my website to buy my art prints? How, how, how? They're the literal same questions. It's just, I work for a brand instead of myself, but I do this podcast on the side. I'm starting a business with some friends, hopefully, if that goes well and we can learn everything. You know, if you can pay your bills and exercise your creative muscles how you would have 
regardless of if you had a job or not you're just funneling your energy into the productive place of making money by working for somebody or yourself if you're good at that it might be selling out but also if people are calling you a sellout what the hell are they doing like really if you if you can make money being a traditional artist and you're on the mountain screaming sell out to people I'm not mad at you either. You know, we all find our own quote unquote life hacks to this. And if you're money driven, which happens to be me, which is how a lot of this perspective sounds, I am a money driven creative because I have learned how much money is on the table for being creative. And I am very fuck the system. I'm going to take all of it and reasonably weasel my way into taking as much money from these companies and brands as I possibly can justify earning because that's 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 winning in my mind and some people that's not their goal and that's okay you just you cater what that means to you because you're alive I believe you're alive once some people believe more but you're alive once and you have to go to work every day and the eight-hour workday in America still exists so what are you going to do with that time the best time of day you're working what are you gonna do If you can find a way to not need to do that, hell yeah, I'm all for you. You go. I don't want to stop you. But for a lot of us out there, especially if we're just starting, we just left school, we just lost our job and are looking for work and we're going to start anew somewhere else or we're, you know, pivoting our careers, all that other stuff is a lot to take on. And I just want you to shake the nerves of quote unquote being a sellout because even if you're working for a brand or company you're probably still creative on your own for for free for nobody and if you're a sellout then what is that what is being creative on your own even not selling out can you be both at the same time are we all going to be both whether we like it or not is that hypocritical does that hypocrisy hurt anybody Does it matter? These are all questions I constantly think about. And so when I'm scrolling around on TikTok and seeing really young people who are still in school talking about selling out and all that stuff, like, I get it, you know. That's what fucking pop punk was all about, which is ironic, too. Popular punk? Like, would regular punks think that's cool? I don't know. Maybe it's not even cool now. I don't know. But... (laughs) (laughs) that's like the whole spirit of this discussion and so I think it's very poignant or whatever at the end of the money month discussion to talk about what being a sellout means and when you really sit and think about what that term even means I don't know if it matters maybe I'm getting old doesn't matter to me call me a sellout call my side part weird call my skinny jeans stupid I don't care you know I'm I'm happy. I have found balance. I live where I live. I've got my snake, who's my best friend, right over here on to my right side of me. He's out and about, actually. I can't show you, though. It's an audio-based platform. Um, <laughs> I make workbooks to help you, whether you're my age or not. I don't care. I just want to help you. I'm here to teach. It's what I love to do for fun. Again, we've established this. I write resumes for fun, guys. I'm a dork. I'm a big dork. So (laughs) I'm a big goth punk dork who's almost 30, writes writes notes apps for days about what my podcast even is. So I just, I, I don't want you to take it so seriously, you know? Being a sellout isn't a big deal. It doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't even hurt the integrity of your work most of the time. And so if it's something you're worried about, it's okay to be worried about it because that's a lot to sift through. You know, I've had eight working years and all of college to think about it. That's almost 10 years of thinking, you know. So uh, I just don't want you to get caught up on the wrong thing, you know. And I want you to think about what you enjoy, I think there's a lot out there in advertising, and I am pointing at me. Uh, There's a lot out there in advertising, social media. There's a bunch of you should be, you should be. If you're not, you're not, you're not. 
which honestly is a shitty way to advertise to people. It's triggering your trauma response over and over and over. And that's garbage. And we're above that. And we're smarter than that. And we're better than that. And we're happier than that. And we don't need, we don't need marketing ploys to do that. We don't like that. And I just don't want you to take it all so seriously because I'm going to tell you the biggest secret of all. What you think the rules are, are not real. And if you need any more proof of that, I don't know what more you need to see. Because I don't know about you, but I watched in the pandemic the police following the rules to be non-existent for protesters and even rioters to do literally whatever they want and nothing happened. And then we went through this huge ass pandemic with no relief, abandoned by the government. We don't have anything happening. We're on our own. So if you're going to leave me on my own, watch me go. (laughs) Watch me just figure it out and do whatever I want. I have a post-it in my bathroom that just says, fuck it, embrace the chaos. Because I, I wasn't really the biggest rule follower in the first place. Because I think you can create whatever reality you want to live in. So long as you're not hurting anybody. But especially trapped in my house for a year in the pandemic I unlearned a bunch of stuff and I just don't think the rules are real and honestly I'm gonna give you a wild stat 80% of people who are promoted to their next job it's not even on the merit of they're good at it qualification is is 10% of your promotion the rest of it is getting in front of the right person and sounding the right way that's how this works. That's how this whole system works. That's why you've probably worked for someone who was a terrible manager because it didn't matter if they were going to be a good manager. They were just promoted because whoever makes the decision thought they were in the right place at the right time. That's how this works. That's how this works. That's how capitalism, that's how getting jobs, that's how getting promotions, that's how this works. That's why I'm teaching you how to frame everything in the right way. Because when you start practicing this and you start getting in meetings with people, you're going to understand it's 80% how you sound and 20% if you're qualified and you can prove it. That is backwards, don't you think? And that's why I say being a sellout and the rules don't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. Honestly, in the the words of Carl Bertanaluski of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, it don't matter. None of this matters. (laughs) And so I just, I really want you to think about that. I think you should be taking your career seriously. And I think you should be taking your craft seriously. Maybe more seriously than your career. You should be striving for the quality of work to get better and better and better. And you should have a sportsman-like competitiveness with yourself and people who are good at what they do around you. But when it comes to taking things too seriously or getting all stressed out and scared about stuff, it doesn't matter. Just go for it. It's all up for grabs. It's all ridiculous. And just whatever is natural to you in the first place, find how you can weasel your way in and fit into these spaces. Because you can. And it just takes confidence and nerve to do it. And we can all work up the nerve. And we can all practice confidence. But you're going to see a lot of bad design out there. And it, and, and it's going to be on billboards. And it's going to be on TV. And it's going to be on the subway. It's going to be everywhere. You're going to see it. Because... The promotion system is weird. This is weird. This whole thing is weird. And if we were in nature as like animals, this is not how this would be playing out. But this is this is what's real. And what is real is a little ridiculous. And that's okay. That's just how this works. So function in reality is my point. And reality is not going to be fair and it's not going to make sense. But observe it and function in reality and enjoy the ride. It doesn't matter. Call me a sellout. It doesn't matter to me. I'm enjoying the ride. I'm in my house talking to myself, but I'm actually talking to 300 of you, according to my stats, listening to this. I'm talking to 3,000 of you on TikTok, according to my stats. I'm talking to 50 of you on my Instagram story. Like, what is this? What are these? So 
I hope that just kind of, I hope that helps you like chill out if that's something you needed, but being a sellout doesn't mean anything. If someone's just going to call you stupid for it, what what do you care? If some kid's going to throw a stick at you for being a sellout, they're a kid with a stick. You're an adult. Like, (laughs) what is this? So I hope that helps. I don't know if any of this did, but I really wanted to talk about sellout and elitism in the art world because quite honestly, the last thing we need is ourselves looking down on us. We don't need more of that. And in our industry and in our field, we do not need people thinking that they are better than us because everybody else already thinks that. We work against the current. The most DIY, the most do-it-yourself career you could possibly have is a creative one. And that's what makes this so fucking punk rock all the time. There's nothing more DIY than going against the odds, against the stakes, against what everybody thinks, against misunderstanding, because people don't know what we do all the time. We always are explaining what we do. We have to explain the value of what we do. We have to prove what we do. We don't need ourselves within our own group looking down on ourselves. That sucks. We don't need that. You should be hyping people up. So what if their design is bad? Help them out. So what if their portfolio looks dated? Help them out. Let them know. Don't gatekeep stuff. Don't look down on people just because like maybe that guy's in a gallery or that guy is a manager and he shouldn't be or whatever it is. Get over it. It's not your business. Just help. Make it better. Move the industry forward. Hype up your neighbor. We need help. We're all we have. Who's going to give a shot to the next kid who has to fake their way into the interview like I did for my first job? Who's going to teach the next generation of designers if you're too busy being an egotistical art director? Who's going to do it? Because we all know it's not art school. So who cares if you're a sellout? It doesn't matter. There are bigger problems. So... We don't need anyone else looking down on us from within when we get enough of that from the outside. And that's really the point of the whole sellout podcast episode is calling someone a sellout is a form of elitism in the art world. And we don't need that. There's enough of that. There's been enough of that for 100 billion years. We need to move the industry forward. We need to be positive. We need to be friends. We need to be productive productive and we need to fill in the gaps that are here there's a diversity gap in our industry there's a knowledge gap in our industry there are pay gaps in our industry what can we do to help each other this is my way of doing that this podcast my patreon free or premium this is my way this is all i could come up with come up with something better than me please talk to me reach out to me help me (laughs) help me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to help you. So that's really what I wanted to get at for this sellout conversation. You are not a sellout. I am not a sellout. And anyone who wants to call me that can go look in a mirror because it doesn't matter. We're just trying to do our best. So, oh man, I get really passionate when I do get on the soapbox. That always makes me nervous to be quite honest. But you know what? Someone has to say it. So I guess it's going to be me. Um, so this concludes my TED talk. Thank you for coming. Um, (laughs) please follow me on TikTok. You can follow me on Instagram if you want. You can see what Ruben the Snake's doing. Um, but please go to my Patreon. That's really where I want you to go. Anything I mention, um, in these podcasts, I put the links there. Um, you can get next week's content for, uh, not for free, in advance for like $2 a month. Um, we have the digital download tier It's seven bucks. I do workbooks. So again, like I said before, all of these money resources from this month and whatever I said in this podcast, all of that will be in the workbook. It's, it always comes out on the last day of the month. So it'll be there. It's an interactive PDF. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, Ooh, excuse me. If you need one-on-one mentorship with me, that is also possible. There's a tier for that. I'll review your portfolio. We can go through your resume together. It's my favorite thing. 
Um, we can connect on LinkedIn. Some of you have already been doing that anyway, uh, which gold star get, getting on LinkedIn. I'm telling you, you need to do it. Um, but if you follow me on TikTok, I do point you to other accounts that have even helped me refine my skills, both resume, interview, negotiating, um, just like good thoughts from other creatives, successful businesses that might know a little more about that than I do. I'm really trying to just point everyone everywhere. So f find me for real. I want to talk to you. I'm in my comments all the time. I'm in my DMs all the time. I want to talk to you. Talk to me. Uh, so that's my little spiel and then next month emotional support month happens I love that month it's so good um I still have to record everything but I'm excited about it so get hype um if, if you're feeling a lot of feels I understand you and we're gonna talk all about it so I will start talking to y'all again next month so goodbye for now <laughs>